morning and welcome. I'm excited that you've joined with us today. My name is Pastor Mike here at the Open Bible Church in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Today I've got a guest. Michaela is with us. And if you were with us a few weeks ago, her sister Kelsey shared her testimony. Michaela's going to share her testimony. Um, I haven't known Michaela as long because she has just returned uh, shortly ago from uh, Taiwan as a missionary. So we've been kind of talking back and forth, and I think you're going to find that her testimony uh, fits right in with what Kelsey shared uh, a few weeks ago. But let's take a moment. Let's pray. Lord, we pray today, God, that, uh, Lord, you'd open our hearts and enable them to be receptive. We want to know you. We want, Lord, to uh, have our hearts open and receptive to your word. And we thank you for Michaela's testimony. We ask God that you'd enable us to be moved by it. Lord, you know every heart of every person who's with us today. So God, we pray that you minister to them by your spirit. We give you the thanks and the praise for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Michaela, why don't you start off? Get right. us going. So as Pastor just mentioned, uh, I returned from a mission trip, although it doesn't look the way that you would expect it to look. Um, but let's go back a little bit. So most of my life, beginning with Kelsey's death, uh, I became aware of God doing something in my life. But let's go back a little bit farther than that. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, you heard Kelsey, my sister, tell you the story of how God knocked her upside the head and opened her eyes to who he is and the, the fight that Christians face every day when we wake up and face Satan. Um, so something else happened to me on that day. I wish I could say that my life drastically changed and I dedicated my life to God, that I saw God, and because of that moment, I changed. But instead, one day after my 17th birthday, my world died. Um, so for most of my life, my sister was the center of my universe. That's who she was. I don't know if anyone else has felt that way, it has placed something as the center of life, the reason why they get up in the morning. But for me, that was Kelsey. That was my sister. Um, she was my son and my source of light and guidance and hope for everything. It wasn't that God didn't exist. It was that he was all the way over there. Kelsey was here and now. I could talk to her. She was breathing. She was moving. She was my rock. And God was Pluto. He was over there. Sometimes, sometimes he switched and he became slightly more important to my life, slightly closer to the center of the universe, but not by much. And because of that, he wasn't really in my focus. Um, and most of the time, I only looked at him to ask for forgiveness if I messed up. And if we're still thinking on the universe scale, you have Kelsey, who is my son. And then you had me. I was Mercury. I was right next to I was just scorched. But... Everyone kind of forgot about me because Kelsey was just this big force and God was over there. God was just a second thought. Um, so the moment that Kelsey came crashing down, my source of light, my source of hope, my source of strength, my source of everything crashed with it. It was just like the lights went out and I had no idea what to do. However, so as Kelsey was struggling with a, with a healing brain and trying to remember daily activities, and I was trying to figure out how to be two people. I was trying to figure out how to be Kelsey and myself because I wasn't the only person who placed Kelsey as this source of hope. And because I was the carbon copy, everyone started looking to me to be that person. And I can tell you the easy fix to this problem would be to rely on God. That would be the easy fix. But we have to remember God was over there. God wasn't the person that I could rely on. The person I could rely on wasn't there anymore. She was gone. And yet he was still all the way over there. So what happened was I had to figure out how to shoulder my entire concept of the world. I had to try and mold this idea that I had created of how the world was supposed to work and it wasn't working. Instead of looking more like the son that I had created my sister to be, 
I started looking like that Greek god Atlas, who has the weight of the world on his shoulders and, and just is crushed beneath the weight. And I don't know, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do because my source of hope was gone. And so I started focusing on college. There had to be a way out. I needed a way out. I started to look for an escape. And so my escape was this dream I'd created of what college would be like. Kelsey was still fighting to remember information long enough to take exams. So I placed my hope in college and what it would bring. It was incredibly selfish, but let's skip ahead a little bit so I can explain why placing my hope in this escape was so selfish. So Kelsey and I went to college together. I'm not sure it's something either of us were super excited about. I wasn't excited about it because at that time in my life, she represented everything wrong with my life. And, and she served this reminder that I was, ha I was having all this weight placed on me and that I wasn't living up to this expectation I had placed her to be. And she wasn't excited because she had to give up a basketball scholarship because her brain just wouldn't yeah. heal. And good. We, found ourselves, we, we found ourselves joining this campus ministry because... It was something to do. It was, we're scientists. We wanted to be scientists. And we knew that oftentimes in the science world, Christians stop believing in God. Um, and God still existed in my universe. He was just still over there, but he still existed. And I didn't want to lose Pluto. And so we started going to this campus ministry. And started going to their meetings and their Bible studies and, and listening to them talk about God right. and love. <laughs> that, that was their main focus that entire semester. They just talked about love. And I didn't yeah. really get it. They were focusing on 1 Corinthians 13 uh, for the whole semester. And <laughs> I mean, for me, yeah. love was just this idea. It was just another one of those ideas that didn't hold weight um, because I didn't know God. And it wasn't until the Martin Luther King Jr. weekend um, that this going to this group made any change. Um, so because of the focus of love, I wasn't really paying attention to what was being said or anything in the group at all. I just knew that they were focusing on the love chapter. And the group was a great source of friends, so we just kept going. Um, and Kelsey and I ended up going to this winter retreat for the MLK weekend. And that's when I noticed things changing. This retreat's theme was love. And I was honestly fed off with this love topic, <laughs> but God wasn't. I mentioned yeah. before that my behavior was really, really selfish. Sure. And I'll explain now. So at this retreat, there was a relationship dynamic explained. And the relationship dynamic was explained as an H versus an A. So an A relationship has a lot of leaning. Um, you have two people and they lean on each other for everything. And then you have their connection of, the, of their relationship. But oftentimes they're just pushing and there's a lot of straight. And it looks like a good idea. Like people are leaning on each other. Like we're supposed to lean on each other, but not really. <laughs> because when you lean on someone yeah. like that, you're putting so much pressure. Not true, yeah. And as, as this guy was explaining, when you put this kind of pressure, one person puts more pressure on than the other, or reverse, or someone leans back, and then this person starts to fall. And ultimately, you end up crushed. So in the moment, this looks nice, but then when you actually put it through stress and, and periods of time, then, then it really starts to cave. And then the other dynamic was explained, and that's an H relationship. And the H relationship is you have two independent people, and they are first leaning on God, and then they have the connection of the relationship. And as he's explaining this, when stress and, and times of trials come, they're not leaning on each other for that. They're expecting right. God to take that's care good. of that. Yeah, that's good. And, and so as the times go through, they don't fall because they're still leaning on God. Yeah. 
And when he was explaining this, I finally realized the relationship I had with Kelsey. For my entire uh, life, we had an A relationship. We leaned on each other for everything. But I think for most of my life, I leaned on Kelsey just a little bit more. And I put a lot of pressure on her. And that's how she came to be my son. And I don't know if anyone else out there does this, but I really placed a lot of pressure on her because I wanted someone to lean on. And I didn't know God. Um, and so there were two big things that God did when Kelsey died. The first one was he showed me that she was breakable. Right. Yeah. He made it so that my source of hope and light was now fallible. And then the other thing he did was he showed me what it feels like to be leaned on so much. Because as Kelsey was fighting the side effects of medicine, she needed me to take notes at school, to do chores, to do her homework, and, and to defend her whenever she said something because her brain was still trying to rebuild. And as it was trying to rebuild, the filter wasn't the first thing that rebuilt. So people didn't always like what she said to them. <laughs> and with each lean from her side, I started to fall. And I started to resent her for it. And that's when I started to really trust in college, what college would bring um, for that. And that's what happens when we place people in God's position in our lives. We lean on them until either failure or resentment happens. And it doesn't work because that's not what's intended to work. And from that point on, from starting to understand God led us the both of us down this path that shifted our relationship from a very strong A to something that started to resemble more than H. Praise and God. yeah, praise God, because I'm not sure she would still be in my life today if he hadn't done that. Um, and so God took me on uh, a few short missions trips. Uh, one of the ones that he took me on was to Australia. And that was where God showed me who I was while introducing me to a part of the ministry he has planned for me. Um, and I feel like every time I go on a mission trip, God ends up revealing more to me about the world or about myself than I provide help as whatever is uh, we're doing. And so for me, one of the big things that happened in Australia was God revealed to me that I'm an extrovert. Now, if you know me now, you're like, no kidding. <laughs> yes, she's an extrovert. But because I had been comparing myself to this big force, this idea that I had created of my sister, I was an introvert because I was like, yeah. no, an extrovert can talk to everyone. And, and I let Kelsey talk to everyone for me. I let her be everything for me. And so when... God started shifting our relationship. Um, he started showing me that I have a voice and that he yeah, had things for me good. to say. Um, and so he also got me used to the idea of working with children because up until then, <laughs> I didn't like children. Yeah. But I was also the youngest child. I hadn't been around a lot of children. I just found them really, really annoying. Um, and that's not how I feel now. <laughs> Um, but that was one of the first introductions and thankfully in my life the way that God has changed my life it's been a lot more gradual and slow um, than you know knocking me upside the head and, and having me die for a few hours um, and then so then I had the um, then I started shifting and the relationship Kelsey and I had didn't really look like an A anymore. It started to look a little more like this. We were still leaning on each other, but we were gradually starting to lean more on God. And that's progress. No matter where you are in life, you have to be thankful that God is, is doing progress. Sometimes we did lean on each other too much. Right. But sometimes God would oh God would show us that we were leaning on him as well. And so then we have the trip that I just got back from. Uh, it was a year in Taiwan. Um, and I didn't go over there with the strict intent of being a missionary. I didn't plan on being a formal missionary. Uh, I had gone to Taiwan a year before that to do a very short missions trip 
Um, and while I was there, I was like, you're going to come back and you're going to teach. And I said, you're oh, funny, awesome. I'm going to grad school. And then I took the time to really think about the, think about what God was telling me. He's like, I can't afford to not listen to him. Um, and so um, that was really an indication. There are times in our lives when we're really tested and it shows us like where we place our hope in it and where, where God is. And that was a great like check, um, like a checkpoint to say, I am making progress. I am putting God more awesome. as my position, in, um, as the position where he's supposed to be in our lives. And so I went there and because I had connections with the missionaries from my first trip, uh, I reached out to them and they opened up their home. And it was amazing because they became the second family. So, as I said, I went over there to be a teacher. And within days of being in Taiwan, I found something. God revealed something to me. And it was that I like teaching. In fact, I love it so much more than, than research and science ever drew me in. I love doing research, but this was a passion that God was showing it to me. And I, I went to college to be a scientist. I, I went to college to be a scientist, but because of this time in Taiwan, I am now pursuing being a science teacher rather than a scientist. And I took a risk. I took a risk to listen to God and to move to a different country. And he revealed a passion to me I didn't know I had. And it was taking that risk, being willing to listen to this crazy idea that he had. And what the, I thought was crazy. And sure. he showed me who I was. Um, and then the next lesson that he taught me took a lot longer. And it, it, was, it was this relationship bias that I had that I didn't realize I had. So I was interacting with these missionary families. And I discovered that... I was looking for these unhealthy habits and their relationships and their marriages. And I was looking and like nitpicking and saying, this is an example of why I'm not sure their relationship is very healthy. And yet it was, they were healthy relationships. It was just that I had this bias that there were no healthy relationships. I believed in my body that there was no healthy relationship because I hadn't really seen one. And so, God started to change. He started to, as these families awesome. opened their homes up and, and let me into being part of their families, I started to realize that this is an unhealthy relationship. This is God moving in their lives um, and, and working with imperfect people. And so this retreat that I went to so long before the, before the mission trip was about love and relationships. But through my experience with Kelsey, and Taiwan, I realized that that dynamic isn't solely meant for romantic relationships. It's about how you treat all of the people in your lives. It's about first leaning on God, first focusing on God, and then the other person. That's right. And, and when you That's lean on God, He doesn't fall. Unlike other people or, or other things in your life, God doesn't fall no matter how much pressure and stress He puts on you. And quite honestly, I don't know where God is leading me next. If he takes me back to Taiwan, okay. If he leaves me in Iowa or takes me somewhere else, that's okay too. But at this point, because of my experiences, I've learned that it, it's far more fulfilling to listen to the crazy ideas that God reveals to you than it is to follow your own plans. Because as you're leaning on God, he reveals to you more of the person he has created you to be. Um, and that's that's what's important. It's not, the importance is not on following your plan. It's on focusing on God and who he has made you to be. Yeah. I know with uh, Kelsey and Michaela, Michaela, you and your sister were willing when we reassembled in the fall to actually be our children's teachers for our classes on Wednesday night, which is phenomenal because they love you. And I think about how God has kind of changed your heart, if you want to say it that way, but more your passion or your willingness to be served or to serve. And um, 
I know that both you and Kelsey, which you're twins, you're both twins, are, are both scientists, and um, Kelsey works in a different area. DNA, she works with DNA, and I worked with bacteria. Bacteria, so when I talk with these gals, they're definitely over my head in certain areas, but what's neat to see is their willingness to, to serve and to say, God, here I am, speak to me. And I think about that A relationship, and I think about that H relationship. Even in married couples, uh, the desire of God's desire is that, yeah, the two become one, but in a sense, each one of them needs to seek God to meet the needs that only he can meet. So a husband can't be God, a wife can't be God, but together they can serve the Lord. The house is two or better than one. But each one has to have God meet the needs that only he can meet. And I think about scripture. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we first seek God, and then all these other things will be added unto us. Another thing that he talks about is, um, you know, in Paul's day, Demas, it said, was following the Lord and he departed or he left his relationship with God because of this present world or his desire to live in the present world. And years ago, when I was a young pastor, I remember reading a commentator say that it was potentially possible that Dema, Demas was more in love with the ministry of Paul or in the ministry of the church than he was with Jesus. And no matter what the church has as a dynamic, whether it's maybe awesome praise and worship, or you might say preaching that you really enjoy, or there's a crowd, or whatever it might be, the church is the body of Christ, that we collectively come together, and wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, there is in the midst, and oftentimes, even when the early church met, they may not have had music, they may not have had a crowd, they certainly may not have had all kinds of uh, things that would entice, but they came together to seek the Lord. They came together to hear a word from God. And they came together to praise and to worship God because he alone is worthy. And I think about the unhealthy relationships that he can be even developed in Christianity today. And so when you were talking about that A and H relationship, I can't help but think Jesus said, I am the vine, and then you are the branches. And he is the source of our supply. He's always there. Kind of like he is that well, as he spoke to the woman in the well, of the woman at the well, that never will run dry. So you can come to him. He's more than able to minister to meet every need that you have. And uh, it's exciting to think of your testimony, to think about how God has raised you up. I mean, that been in the church that long, but just to share and to say, God, here we are. Use us for your glory. And I believe God has enabled you to see not just one or two, but you'll see many healthy relationships of not only marriages, but people who have a right relationship with God. And they did depend upon him because he is faithful. He said, call unto me, I'll answer thee, and show thee great to make mighty things, which thou knowest not. So, appreciate you sharing, Michaela. That's a good word. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Let's, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, I believe, God, that uh, there are those of us who, Lord, just need to be reminded that all of our strength, all of our source of our supply is found in you. Lord, oftentimes we've been guilty of leaning into others, maybe seeking from others what they just cannot satisfy, coming to others and saying, this is what I'm looking for, when in fact, God, only you can meet that need. So Lord, we pray that you enable us to have a consistent, a, a consistent relationship that daily comes to seek you. You are daily bread. We come before you daily and say, Lord, we need you today. We don't want to be dependent upon human reasoning or past experience, but God, we want to hear your voice. We're your sheep. We want to follow you as our shepherd. And Lord, in our relationships, then enable us to exhort and encourage one another with that healthy age relationship that builds up somebody that begins to speak words of encouragement and strength and comfort. And God enables us to speak even the prophetic word, the prophetic words that God enable people to be spurred on to love and good deeds. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Michaela. I thank you, Lord, for Kelsey. I thank you, Lord, for their uh, testimony. And I thank you, Lord, for their uh, God just seeking you for direction.
From this day forward, you'll continue to guide them. And Lord, for each of us, we say, Lord, here we are. Would you lead us by the skillfulness of your hand? Let us hear that still, small voice speaking, this is the way. Walk you in it. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Amen. Amen.